Hi everyone, welcome to Book Cravings. In this video, we will be talking about beautiful, affordable collections of classics. I'll be showing you 10 different collections and at the end of the video, I hope you will be able to choose which one is the best for you and I'll also be telling you which are my favorites. We will be considering nine main features. But first, let me tell you, as book lovers, we all have our strong opinions about what makes a great quality book. Here in this video, I'll be considering um, how beautiful the collection is and how affordable it is, okay? So we'll be considering nine main features. We will be talking about the format, uh, won't be covering paperback books, I'll be talking about hardcovers and some flexi-bound book collections that have great quality and price. We will be considering cover materials. We have paper-bound, cloth-bound and leather-bound books. I will also be talking about a feature that I consider really important when choosing a book collection and that feature is binding. We have two main types of binding. We have glue binding, which is also called perfect binding, in which the pages of the book are glued on the spine. And this is really not the most durable option. And we also have sewn binding or Smythe sewn binding, in which the pages of the book are folded and they are sewn on the spine and the signatures of the book are sewn together. This makes a really durable book, book that will stand the test of time if the paper is good. For example, if you put the book on the table and if you open the book, no matter what, the book will stay flat open really easily. And we also have nice margins inside it. So I really prefer Smythe Sewn Binding. In this video, only one of the collections I will be covering have glue binding. And I choose to put this collection in this video because many people are not aware that this collection has glue binding. Another really important feature you should consider when choosing a book collection is the type of paper. In this video, I'll be telling you if the paper is cream colored, if it's white, if it's too thin, and most importantly, if the paper is acid free. In case you don't know, acid free paper is a type of paper that when infused in water, it yields a neutral pH. That means the pages won't become yellow, um, they won't become brittle and they won't be deteriorating quickly over time. So this is a really important thing to consider. I'll also be showing you some interesting details about each of these collections. If they offer ribbon markers, extra content, illustrations, for example. I'll also be talking about price. I have chosen these 10 collections because I consider them affordable, but of course affordability is something really, really subjective because we all have different budgets. So I'll be giving you a price range and that way you'll be able to judge it by yourself, okay? If you're new to this channel, consider subscribing. Here we talk about beautiful books, beautiful collections, hit the bell button to get notifications of new videos. And if you are already a subscriber, give me a thumbs up because I put a lot of hard work planning, filming and editing this video. Without further ado, let's jump into it. Collection number one, Barnes & Noble Leather Bound Collectible Classics. Barnes & Noble is one of the largest booksellers in the world. It also publishes non-copyrighted titles anthologies and omnibus editions. First, let's talk about the leather-bound collectible classics. They are hardcovers and the boards are very resistant. They have sewn binding. Let's see if it can open completely flat. Yes, it does. The cover material is bonded leather, also called reconstituted leather or blended leather. It definitely contains animal hide, but not all leather is equal. Bonded leather is specially leather, and usually to be called leather, it only has to be around 20% leather. Leather doesn't come in long sheets like man-made materials do. There is always scraps 
and bonded leather is the result of these scraps that are grounded and glued together. And that's why this collection is inexpensive. It contains leather, but it isn't bound in real, genuine, pure leather. Barnes & Noble doesn't indicate the type of paper used, but most likely it is acid-free paper. It is cream-colored and the grammage, the thickness of the paper, feel the same in both copies I have here. It is more on the thin side and we can see a little shade of the other side of the printed page. If we consider all the Barnes & Noble collectible editions, leather-bound and flexi-bound, there are more than 100 titles. Also some contemporary classics from different genres, for example, here we have the first book of the Wheel of Time series, a fantasy series released in the 90s. I wish Barnes & Noble released more books in this series, in this format, but I don't think they will. The price of bonded leather copies varies from 10 to 25 US dollars. They come with smooth ribbon markers in different colors, but same size and materials. The leather-bound copies usually, but not always, have introductions, and some children's titles are illustrated. The cover and end paper design are made by different designers, so you don't have books that look alike, and some people don't enjoy how they look, and some people love them. I have mixed feelings to my taste. Some of the designs are too much out there, but some are really nice. I usually prefer a typographic approach than illustrations on the cover, I love the fact that they have half round spines and especially the gilded edges, gold or silver. I'm not sure about the quality and how long it will take for them to discolor, but they look really good. All the sides are gilded, not only the top of the paper block. They all have a printed end paper with an interesting design that matches the theme of the book. The font size varies, same for the margins. Overall, the price is great for what you get. The quality is good. I think we all agree that Barnes & Noble could have done this collection with much less attention to detail and people would buy it anyways. The variety of titles and genres is also great, but the design can be a bit tacky for some people and the bundled leather isn't good for those who avoid animal hide, this is my case, not for purists who enjoy genuine real leather. Collection number two is Barnes & Noble Collectible Classics, the Flexi-Bound Editions. They have flexible covers bound in fake leather in many different colors. They have sewn binding, but they are not as flexible as the leather-bound copies. Barnes & Noble doesn't indicate the type of paper used, but most likely it does contain acid-free paper. But the paper is very different from the leather-bound collection, is a bit darker, thicker and rough to the touch. Again, if we consider all the Barnes & Noble collectible editions, both leather-bound and flexi-bound, there are more than 100 titles, but I have the impression that the majority of the titles, and the most interesting ones, are leather-bound. Here we have, naturally, even better prices. They usually cost around $10 or even less. They have the same kind of ribbon markers of the leather-bound copies, even the same length, and that's why in this particular book it looks way too long. Usually they have neither extra contents nor illustrations. This cover, for example, has lovely debossed details, the overall design is consistent, they all have printed end papers, although this fake marbled end paper here looks very cheap. The edges are gilded in different complementary colors, and overall the price is good and it looks good, but there seem to be less titles in this format than in the leather bound format. The paper doesn't seem to be as good as the paper they used in the leather bound copies, and some copies are hard to find, they go out of print and sometimes they just change the design of the cover for the same title. Moving on to collection number 3, the Penguin Cloth Bound Classics. Many people love this collection. It looks definitely cute and delicate. These are all hardcovers, they are bound in linen cloth with stamped pretty details. But when it comes to the binding, these copies are all glued. They have what is called perfect binding instead of sewn binding. And as you may see, the book doesn't open flat as we would like. 
The binding is definitely stiff and when I force it to open completely, I'm always afraid the pages will fall apart. The paper isn't necessarily poor, but it is thin and there is no info about it being acid-free and since they decided to use a glued binding, I would assume the paper isn't acid-free. The collection has more than 60 titles and prices usually vary from $9 to $20 and of course, during sales you'll be paying less than that. They come with nice ribbon markers and offer a nice amount of extra contents. Here we have a chronology of the author's life, introduction, further reading and notes. They don't have illustrations, they feature custom patterns on the cover by award-winning designer Coralie Bickford-Smith. Each pattern is inspired by the book itself, they have colored end papers and since they were created by the same designer, the collection looks very cohesive. I got this copy here because I wanted a hardcover of The Woman in White, a subscriber called Jeffrey Kaufman recommended it to me and this one was on sale, but I wouldn't collect this edition, you know, Consider all the pros and cons, I enjoy the design, which is very cohesive and lovely as individual books and as a collection, but the major setback to me is the binding and the quality of the decorations on the cover. This is something that annoys me a lot. I wouldn't buy an entire collection of books with glued binding. Many people have experienced discoloration on the stamped decorations on the cover. I accidentally scratched a nail over the decorations and I couldn't believe how easily the foil decoration came off. I will show you to prove that this is not a rumor, this actually happens. And if you plan to carry these books around, or if you have sweaty hands, you will ruin them very quickly. Now for the Knickerbocker Classics, Slipcase Editions. The Knickerbocker Classics are published by Race Point Publishing. There are the Flexibound books, the children's hardcovers, and the Slipcase Editions that are also hardcovers. They have sewn binding, full cloth binding, and the paper is acid-free, although thin, not necessarily fragile. From what I know, there are currently around 15 titles in the slipcase editions, and once in a while they release a new one. This is one of the collections I'm trying to complete, and in the future I will show you all the books I own. The price varies from $30 to $35, they all have ribbon markers and sometimes extra contents and illustrations. They all come in a very sturdy slipcase that tries to match the lovely design of the cloth, but unfortunately they sometimes don't look really good together. The quality of the slipcase is really nice and the signature of the author is a nice touch. The cloth in which these books are bound is really good and I really enjoy how the patterns are related to the content of the book. They also have matching end papers and foil blocking on the spine. Considering the pros and cons, the only thing that I don't like about this collection is how the colors of the slipcase and the cloth in which the book is bound sometimes don't match. And of course, this is a heavy book. Even if you pay full price, I believe they're worth it. There is a considerable amount of content in these bind-up books and if you consider the various books in one, the cost-benefit is great. I have some videos on them, if you're interested, I'll put a link in the description. Well, Knickerbocker Classics also have flexi-bound books. These books form a complete and unabridged collection with an introduction by a notable scholar. They have cloth-bound soft covers with an elastic closure, the paper is cream colored more on the thin side and I couldn't find out if it's acid free or not. I counted more than 40 titles in the collection, which is a good number. There are fiction and some non-fiction classics. Their usual price is around $17, but I've seen some of them for $10. Unfortunately, they don't come with ribbon markers but they offer extra content, such as introductions, the life and times of the author, reveals and notices, and further reading. These are no illustrated books, at least I haven't seen a copy with illustrations on this collection so far. Each edition features a different pattern on the cloth. I really enjoy some of them, 
but in some cases the pattern has absolutely nothing in common with the title, which feels a bit off. The texture of the cloth is smooth and nice to the touch. I enjoy the fact that the title on the cover and on the spine is printed on the cloth itself and even being sometimes really colorful, a collection of these books would look cohesive on the shelves. There is this elastic band that is good for protecting the pages if you carry the book around and it has that moleskin notebook look about it. But I ask myself if the band will completely become loose over time in the same way that happens with the moleskin notebooks. If you use those kinds of notebooks, you probably know what I mean. Considering the pros and cons, I really enjoy the design of this collection. I'm a big fan of cloth-bound books and I think that this collection is a good option if you're looking for a collection with a limited number of titles. The only thing I'm not a big fan is the format which is more like a square format. I'm not a big fan of this shape. I don't think it is comfortable to read as it could be. And the elastic band in this copy here is tight enough to deform the flexible cover. Otherwise, I really like this collection and I probably will be buying more titles in the future. Next, we have the Kala Editions series by Dover that have beautiful resized editions of classics. They are cloth-bound hardcovers, usually, but this can vary according to each book. The binding is always sewn with acid-free paper, and since each book has an individual design, the color of the paper may vary. The collection has almost 30 titles of classics and children's classics. The price goes from $20 to $40 to the facsimiles of nice editions released many decades ago. They don't usually come with ribbon markers or extra contents, since the idea is to offer facsimile books. These copies are reproductions of the most beautiful editions from the golden age of bookbinding, usually illustrated. The design is always beautiful, and each book has its own shiny gilt details. I love that. Considering pros and cons, the only con I can think of is that sometimes it is hard to find some of the titles. Actually, it is impossible to find the majority of these titles here where I live. I recently became a fan of these books. They have this vintage, classy feeling about them. They look great on the shelves and I will do my best to complete this collection. The price is a bit higher than what I consider really affordable, especially considering some of the collections I mentioned in this video, but it isn't fair comparing them like that, because what they offer is the best of the golden age of bookbinding for a fair price. They also have original titles that are not facsimiles. And next, one of my favorites, Everyman's Library. It was founded in 1906. This exact collection is being published since 1991. They have Smythe sewn cloth binding, silk ribbon marker, acid-free paper in a perfect grammage. The cream-colored paper is really smooth to the touch. As extras, all the books come with substantial introductions by leading scholars and writers and comparative chronologies. The format of the book is really easy to read and comfortable. To me, this is the perfect size for a book that you want to read and reread many times. There are hundreds of titles, classics and contemporary classics. Everyman's Library is currently an imprint of Alfred A. Knopf, a division of Penguin Random House, with more than 600 titles in print. They also have a lovely collection of children's classics that I will be covering in another video. The price tag varies from $20 to $35, depending on the titles, but the majority of these books is usually sold from $16 to $30 on Amazon US. Last time I checked it, they are printed and bound in Germany, and in Europe I found better prices. At Waterstone stores in London, I could find entire sessions of Everyman's Library books. These books look good with the dust jackets, but without the dust jackets, they look amazing. I'm always tempted to keep them on the shelves without the jackets. The full cloth cases have two color case stamping in black and gold. The gold stamping is shiny, 
really attractive. They have very simple decorative end papers, and I also love the European style half round spines. Overall, the design is really, really classy. Each Everman's Library book has a cord cloth binding denoting the period of the work. Burgundy for Victorian literature and 19th century, dark green for pre-Victorian romantic 18th century, light blue for 17th century and earlier, celadon green for non-western classics, mauve for ancient classics, and sand for poetry. Considering pros and cons, I'm afraid I have difficulty finding cons for this collection, but there are different dust jackets for classics and modern classics. I like them, but I don't like another model that is less attractive. And the other day, someone left a comment telling me that after reading a copy of this collection, the lettering on the spine faded. Fortunately, I haven't experienced this. And now let's talk about the Macmillan Collector's Library. These copies are great to travel and beautiful to display on the shelves. They are cloth-bound hardcovers that come with a pretty illustrated dust jacket and have some binding. They have acid-free paper, but very white and definitely thin. This collection has more than 200 titles. Few titles are abridged, so you have to pay attention to it, but the range of the collection is really impressive and once in a while they have new releases. The price is usually around $12, they have beautiful rail markers, they don't come with extra contents that I'm aware of, the design is lovely with this detail on the cover and cute edges, it looks really nice. The big letdown is the white paper, but despite its color, the quality is good. I guess these copies are really fine if you want to own reading copies of many great classics, carry them around with you without worrying too much. This collection is a nice choice if you are on a budget and you want to start a collection of affordable but durable editions of classics. They don't need much space on the shelves and they are also very light. I'm a big fan of pocket-sized books, but the quality of pocket-sized books is not usually good. The Macmillan Collector's Library is definitely an exception, offering good quality, price and looks. And this is an updated design of these older looking copies, and I think the new ones look much nicer. The last collection we will be talking about is another favorite, Library of America, a non-profit organization that champions American cultural heritage by publishing America's greatest written works. Some info that I'll be providing are available at their website. They are hardcovers, but the binding boards are flexible. The books are light and easy to carry, especially considering that the average volume contains 1,000 pages, measuring less than 2 inches thick. The trim size is based on the golden section, considered the basis for like aesthetically beautiful design. Like Everman's Library, Library of America volumes feature is my song binding, one of the most durable and expensive commercial process available. In contrast to most books published today, you can bend Library of America volumes all the way back without cracking the spine or endangering the threads of glue. The binding cloth is woven rayon, dyed in the thread for richness of color. The end papers match the binding cloth and each volume includes a lovely ribbon marker. They are really thin and lovely. Uh, Library of America books are printed on a premium acid-free, lightweight, opaque paper and it is thin but very comfortable to read and delicious to the touch. Library of America offers hundreds of titles, guys. Prices vary from $30 to $40. Library of America states that the volumes are sold for less than it costs to produce them, offering great value to readers. Let me remind you that this is a non-profit organization. As extras, they offer a chronology and notes, and naturally, no illustrations. The overall design is very discreet and sober, the page layout is designed by renowned English designer Bruce Campbell using Galliard, a very elegant typeface, considering pros and cons. These books would look better with an European half-round spine, 
but this is just my opinion. They are incredible books, really well made, one of my favorite collections. These books are light and comfortable to hold with only one hand. The downside are the dust jackets that don't look good. They definitely grew on me lately, and for the sake of consistency and coherence, they shouldn't change it, but they look definitely outdated. And there are two versions, a more glossy one and an opaque one. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Hit the bell button to get notifications of new videos about book collections and great works of literature. We have affiliate links listed in the description. If you want to buy one of these books, one of these collections I mentioned here, consider using uh, our affiliate links to support this channel while getting beautiful editions. Again, guys, thank you so much for watching and I see you all in the next video. Bye!